Hey, good afternoon, everyone. This is John Morgan, and we are here 2020 with another awesome webinar for you. I want to thank everybody for joining us today. Uh, as you've all probably heard me say many, many times, I can't even begin to tell you how much we um, enjoy our partnership with you in, in this uh, design community. Um, this session that we're going to go through today is uh, always one of my favorites. It's one of the sessions that we try to repeat every year with new uh, features, new ideas. Uh, we're going to be focused on renderings and presentation, and you're looking at an awesome, awesome design on my screen right now. And if you look at the little screen, the little computer screen to the lower left-hand corner, you'll see what the original rendering looked like. Um, this rendering is from um, one of uh, NKBA's 30 Under 30s. That's uh, Kaylee Helgett. Uh, Kaylee designed this kitchen in 2020 and was one of our Inspiration Design Award winners last year. Throughout this session, I'm going to be using multiple kitchens, multiple plans. Uh, you're going to see lots of different renderings, and I want to let you know that not a single one of them was done by myself or anybody at 2020. Every one of the renderings, every one of these plans, they're actually done by our users, by kitchen and bath uh, professionals just like you. And if you go out to our website, you'll see there's a little section there for the Inspiration Design Award winners. You can see lots of other great renderings and even some tips and tricks and so forth on how to create those. And that's what we're going to be focused on today. So this session is going to be a little bit different in that we're going to divide it into rendering best practices and presentation best practices. Matter of fact, I am going to do something a little bit different this time. I am going to start with the presentation section first. So we're going to be taking a look at best practices in presenting because as awesome as we all may be at creating great designs, great renderings, great projects, at the end of the day, we've got to sell these great projects. So let me share with you some best practices from folks just like you um, in how they take these renderings and present them to a client to sell the job. Before we really roll into this, I want to mention a couple quick things. Number one, the first question that I typically get in one of these webinars is, where will there be a recording? Yes, there will be a recording. And we will automatically send that to you via email. So we will connect with you in the next few days. You will have a link directly to a recording. So you can go back and play whatever section you need to or share it with your coworkers. Matter of fact, you may not realize this, but we have around 4,000. Yes, you heard it right, 4,000 thousand kitchen and bath pro, uh, professionals that have registered for today's event. Usually maybe a third or so actually attend live and then the rest get watched over the next couple of days. But within a week or two, we'll probably have somewhere near 10,000 views of this video. So please feel free to share it. And if you want to see some of our previous presentations, you can always go to our website um, to the backslash or forward slash webinars. I also get questions of, can you ask questions of us? Absolutely. We have um, two of our top level customer support people online with you live. You can go into the chat room um, and ask any questions that you want, and they will respond to them. Matter of fact, we usually keep a log of those uh, questions afterwards as well. So please feel free to actively communicate with uh, both Neil and Frank from our customer support section. Um, if you are sending something to me, I'm not actually watching the chat room. Um, I'm focused on the presentation itself, but Neil and Frank will be able to help you. Now let's move in and let's talk about a couple of other places where you can get a little bit of help. Um, if you go to our website, you'll see a brand new revamped website. And you'll see there's a training section, a knowledge center, and even a community, all for slightly different purposes, but at the end of the day, all for making you or helping you be better at what you do in your business bettering your business, and bettering your results to your client. So please check out the website and take a look at all three of these centers. Now as we go in and we're going to focus on best practices and presentation, everything I'm about to show you um, is real world practice by somebody just like you. These aren't ideas of mine, just like the designs aren't mine. I've actually um, um, talked to other folks just like you, seen what great ideas they have, and I'm going to share them with the community now. The very first thing that I want to talk about is, is um, how we get to great renderings like this and then present. So if you were to take a look at, let's say that rendering there, I would say one of the best practices that I see in the design community is actually planning. 
planning what I always call the project or decision journey of the client. Just like I am meeting with you, you're giving me an hour of your time, I'm not going to jump around and, you know, from idea to idea to idea. I have already mapped out what I want to discuss with you. Just like you want to be organized and map out your presentation with your client. So if we take a look at a couple of ideas that I see in the design community, I, I personally really love an organized story. Now right now, I am using PowerPoint to demonstrate this. But if you take a look at this, you'll see that you could take PowerPoint slides. You can create, let's say, a, um, a background. You can create a background here. Hold on just a second. Um, I'm going to hesitate here just for a second. Let me see what that was. I'm not sure. Uh, we had a little video conferencing thing just popped up on my screen from, uh, uh, from our webinar here. But we'll keep right on going. You'll see here that I have gone through and I have organized all the slides. So I create like a template background. Just like right now, you're going to notice that all of my slides all have 2020 in the lower right-hand corner and all have the same font and the colors and schemes and so forth. So a lot of businesses, when they're going to present their ideas to a customer, they actually go and create their own templates. That way they can give a professional presentation to their client, whether it's in their closing room or whether it's in their, um, whether it's in their uh, um, you know, on your mobile device or, or just on your computer in their home. It's a professional version or a professional appearance and presentation. And it's not just about creating the, back, uh, the backdrop slides. It's about organizing and presenting the way you want. Because when you create a document like this and you include all the information that you want to give to your customer, this keeps you on track and focused, and all you have to do is go forward and backward to see all the materials. I think this is brilliant in how you do it. Now, I happen to be using PowerPoint right now, but there's certainly you know, dozens, if not more dozens, of companies out there or applications out there that will do the same thing. I like PowerPoint because I've used it for years. One of my associates, Vanessa, at 2020 loves Canva. There's lots of different types of programs that you can use, and I've listed a couple of the most popular here on the screen right now. And again, it's about organizing your presentation to your client. Now let's talk a little bit more about marketing before we actually get into how to create these great renderings. Now you are a professional kitchen and bath designer. And that's what we want you to focus on as being a professional kitchen and bath designer. Later in this presentation, we're going to talk about creating 360s, um, how to create virtual reality images. You're not a pro in virtual reality and you don't need to be. We'll take care of that. Well, the same thing you, here. When you're thinking about creating presentations to your clients, you're not necessarily a marketing person either. So like me, you're looking for great ways to create background slides, to be able to create impact with your client while you're trying to sell, trying to sell that project or space that you've just, uh, just designed. There's lots of services out there that can make you pretty proficient um, when it comes to the marketing side and creating these presentations. For instance, there's companies like uh, Shutterstock, Bigstock, Dreamstime, iStock, and I do this myself all the time. Matter of fact, you'll see some images here that I've copied and used in this presentation or recent presentations. And if we come back over to um, my screen, I'm going to go back over to my web browser for a moment, you'll see that I'm actually logged into one of these sites right now. These are all images that I use in presentations to, to impress clients, but I didn't create these items. I simply went out to a site like this, and I bought them from people that are much more creative than I am. And you'll notice that when I go into a site like this and I buy a background, for instance, if you take a look at this one right here, we're going to see this one in just a second. If I simply typed in search, you could type in anything. I could type in uh, happy customer. And there are professional images that somebody who's a lot more artistic than I am has created that I can use in these slides to help sell. Again, these are complementary items to enhance your customer's experience as you're presenting to them. So don't forget, things like this are available with, to you as well. Let's jump back over to the PowerPoint. I want to show you something else I think is really, really cool. I've noticed a couple of people doing this recently. Um, I really like this because I've done this for years. Um, 2020, a number of years ago, asked me to go out and buy a software called Camtasia, which allows me to actually screen capture um, my computer, 
So I can go in and record videos like the tips that you may see on our website. They were all recorded on my computer using something called Camtasia. I think it's $299. I've noticed a number of, of designers actually using video software to capture their presentations to their clients. So they can actually go in, make a presentation, record it very easily on their computer, record it extremely easily, share it with their client. Their client can view it now. They can replay it again tonight. They can replay it again tomorrow. They can replay it at the end of the project. What's really, really awesome about making recordings of your presentation, especially for such a low cost, what's really important about this is, is it creates consistency in the message that you're delivering. So you know for sure what you've said to the client. You know for sure what they're hearing. You can always go back and check it again. And what it does is it creates the right expectations up front, meaning that at the end of the project, your client was just as clear with what we started with. So if you're going to you know, design the kitchen and you're going to put end panels on the end of the island, if that's in your recorded presentation at the end of the project, they're looking at their, their, their island with end panels on it. It's exactly what they expected. Because we all know that most issues at the end of the job are unmet expectations. Using tools like this really help us um, create the right foothold, the, the right beginning with our clients to help ensure their happiness at the end. And to give you an example of this, if you watch right now, now you can see a little picture of me. This is actually from a day or two ago. I recorded this from my desk. It took me literally a minute and 45 seconds. And if I simply go through and start to play this, I use Camtasia to capture this, this PowerPoint that you just saw a moment ago. This is the same PowerPoint. And theoretically, you would be hearing my voice talking about your kitchen, talking about the elevations. You'll see me move through and talk about the floor plan and details. Now, when I recorded this, I just did it so that you would have an example of what a client would actually see. But this, this could be two minutes. It could be five minutes. It could be 20 minutes where you're going through and talking about the detail of the image. But again, I'm using a PowerPoint in the background, and I'm simply moving through the slides and if you watch the little video in the right-hand corner, that's me at the time talking about the, the textures that are going to be used, talking about the different images, and so forth all the way through. Now, again, what's cool about that is if you have a software like I just talked about Camtasia or some of the others, you can record these presentations and share them as much as you need to with the client, and you've created that consistency and value in the presentation of the awesome renderings that you've created. Now let me move forward here. Now the video is going to keep on running. Let's talk a little something about one of my favorite um, dealers out there, how they actually sell using these images. Um, I'm using right now Anthony Johnson's image. I talked about Kaylee Helgett earlier. Anthony's also one of our award winners. Um, this is a kitchen he submitted to us last year, and I like to use in my webinars. Uh, it's very easy. It's a great looking kitchen and very easy to use. Now I have a designer um, south of me. When they present uh, to their clients, they like to focus on something called ROE. Most people focus on ROI, return on investment. They're actually looking at most of the jobs they do is really about enhancing the lifestyle of their client. You know, they look and think, okay, we're going to design this space together. We're all working together, and we're going to create a space where for the next 20 years, that client is going to be making their future memories. You know, if that client sits down 20 years from now and thinks back of some of their favorite things that have ever happened in their lives, it will happen in the room that you designed. So this designer, when they present, they're very forward in showing what's going to happen in that room, why you are going to buy this space, this design from them. So what they'll do is they'll take an image out of 2020. They might put it in a PowerPoint. They might put it into another type of application. You can actually do this in show drawing layout as well in 2020. And they will note on the screen where your memories will be made. Here, your place where your most cherished memories will be made. You're watching the Sunday or hockey or football game. Down here, mixing cookie dough for the kindergarten bake sale. Over here, years you know, of friends gathered around the counter for social get-togethers. It's where you and your friends are going to be sharing wine and stories and fun times for the next 20 years. You know, watching the snowfall from the sink area, uh, 20 years of your kids doing homework and school projects right there on the end of that awesome, awesome island. So I think it's a cool way to do it. 
because a lot of times sales is a show. Sales is theater. And if you can create movement, you can create a connection for your client, this, to set something up like this, literally takes you a minute or two. And think about the impact that it has with your client. Very different than somebody sliding over a black and white outline drawing of their future room and having to explain it. All of these tools are either nothing or next to nothing, and you can marry them to the, the incredible results that you're getting from your renderings in 2020. So return on enjoyment, R-O-E. Don't forget that term. Now let's talk a little bit about action. Now, 2020 has what we call dynamic renderings, right? You all are familiar with it. If you change something in your floor plan, your perspectives will change as well. Now, many of you have showrooms where you have TV screens on the wall. Matter of fact, I was in a showroom the other day, had like a 75-inch flat screen on the wall where the client can sit on a sofa and look at their kitchen while the kitchen designer sits and uses their laptop to make design changes. So here's the picture or the rendering of the room, and the designer is using the laptop to make changes. As you know, if you make changes on your floor plan, the rendering automatically changes in front of the customer too. Let me give you a couple of examples of that. So let's go ahead and let's switch back over to my 2020. I'm going to do a bunch of things live for you here today. So let's take our plan. This is actually Anthony's kitchen. I'm going to slide this plan over here to the left. There's my floor plan. Now, on the right-hand side of my screen, I'm going to open up the rendering. So here's my rendering of Anthony's kitchen. Okay, I'm going to move it around a little bit. We'll let it start to render. This is what I mean. I want you for a moment to pretend. The left-hand side of my screen is my laptop. All right, that's my laptop. The right-hand side of the screen is what is on the 75-inch television on your showroom wall or in, in your closing room. You can literally do what I just did. If you connect your laptop to the TV, you can drag the perspective up to that TV screen. And then when you make changes, it will automatically update your TV screen. So if I come over to my floor plan for a second, I'm going to zoom in to where this chair is. See this chair right here at the end? If I right-click on that chair, highlight it, and say move, I can click somewhere down here on the floor plan. Watch what happens when I click on the floor plan and start to move. Look at my perspective. You'll actually see that the chair is moving around. It is live action on my screen. So I could take this, I can slide it into place, and the customer can actually see me make some changes to the plan. Now I have one um, designer friend who's actually pretty local to me. I love what he does. He actually completes 99% of a plan before he shows it to a client. He always leaves one or two decisions at the end, and then he and the client do these together. He lets the client see the perspective on the wall, and then he makes changes on the floor plan. He likes to do that because, number one, it connects the client. The client feels like they're a part of their kitchen design. And he also understands that action and the sales process and so forth, all this comes together to, to really engage and, and kind of hook the client into what you're doing. So if we take a quick look here, let me just move, and I'm going to talk about how real this is. If I zoom in right now, and let's actually just move up just a little bit, and I'm going to look down to this corner here. So this is going to be where my wastebasket is. Okay, that's my 21-inch wastebasket. If I come over to my floor plan and I click on it, and I say, all right, got a 21-inch wastebasket, I've highlighted it. If I come over to my plan over here and say, let's go to a base cabinet, let's go to a base door drawer unit, let's go to a base door drawer standard, and let's just pick a 21 left, just a plain old cabinet. If I right-click on that cabinet and I hit replace, watch my perspective when I click replace. My perspective changed as well. Now, you notice I pulled this out. This is actually a frameless cabinet that I just popped in here, completely different door style. So I could go through in the same exact door style, the same exact products, but I can make instant changes right in front of the client. Now, obviously, you and I aren't going to be mixing this cabinet inside of this beautiful, uh, elegant shaker. Um, I call it elegant because it has that inside bead on it, but elegant shaker style um, room. But you can make changes like that, and they are live. Did you know, did you know that if you are working with drawing layout, does everybody know what drawing layout is? If you haven't used drawing layout before, that is under the items tab. I'm sorry, that's under the presentation tab. It's called drawing layout. 
You can also right-click on your floor plan and choose Show Drawing Layout at the bottom, and it switches your screen. Now you'll see right now that I actually have a drawing layout here, and you'll see that I was using some Star Wars images for something earlier. Here's a floor that I was playing around with to put into the kitchen, a different tile pattern, a couple of different perspectives. If I come back here and I click on number two, you'll see that I have a couple of elevations. I go back to the original. There's a perspective, a couple of cutaways, a tile, and so forth. You can, in these drawing layouts, you'll see these tabs down here, you can actually create your own presentation simply by right-clicking in the gray area, going to Create a New Tab. It will ask you what you want your template to appear like. Let's say I choose template number 10, which will give me four equal size windows. I can click OK, and if we give it a second, it's going to give me a brand new piece of paper that I can go in and start adding my images whether it's a picture of the door style, a cutaway of the tile, a, a molding, um, you know, side view cutaway, whatever it's going to be, I can put those in there and literally create my own presentation that I could print out or copy and paste into my PowerPoint presentation. Here's what I want you to notice. If I go back to Drawing Layout and we take a look at um, this image right here, you'll notice that when I make changes, these images will update automatically as well. So if I come back out of here and I were to go back to show um, my design and I were to delete the cabinet that you could see on that screen or actually delete something on the island or move the chairs around, it automatically updates my drawing layouts too. That's pretty cool because we're using what's called dynamic renderings. So if you create these templates, you never have to go back and change them they will automatically update as you make changes to your floor plan. So you can use that feature to present in the, again, drawing layout section, or you could have presented by going to the perspective. Let me make this full screen again, and you would have actually seen all the changes occur in the perspective in real time. Pretty awesome. So let's go ahead and switch back over to our PowerPoint, and let's go to the next slide. Next slide is going to talk a little bit about leveraging client smart devices. Um, you should know today that the most powerful technology that has ever stepped foot into your showroom is actually your customer's smartphone because that's where they're doing all their dreaming. That's where they're going out and researching product. They're looking at designs. Um, um, they're getting reviews on you and me and everybody else. Um, that's what they're, that they're using all the time. It's a very, very powerful tool. Now, what's pretty cool about that tool is, is there are ways that you can take advantage of the fact that they keep that device with them 24 hours a day. Matter of fact, my image here, I'm imagining that she is showing him his new space, and he's simply using the phone to move around and actually get an idea or an immersive view of what his space is going to look like. Now, here's a couple of ways you can use your client's smart device to present. Number one, remember those PowerPoints I talked about before with the templates? You could actually share those with your client, and they could sit and look at them on their iPad or their phone. There's many showrooms that actually have iPads right in the closing rooms, so your clients are looking at your presentations on your company-owned iPads. They're all there. Um, if you're a company that doesn't want to share your information early, um, I would suggest having your own iPad set up in your showroom because they stay there. Um, if you're a company like I am, I'm an open architecture kind of guy. I like to share as much as possible all the time because I feel like the more and more I prove um, myself to someone, um, the more they're going to come back to me. In that case, you might just be sharing it right to their mobile device. Now, what can you share? Let's give you a couple of ideas here. I'm going to talk about 360 panoramas in just a second. And what I mean by a 360 panorama is this. If you come back into your 2020 for a second, let's say we're looking at a perspective, okay? Here's your perspective of your room. If you'll notice in the upper left-hand corner of your screen, there is a camera, all right? That camera has a little green arrow that wraps around it. That's called 360 panorama. If you click on that, all you have to do is tell 2020 where you want to stand in the room, and give it your email address. If you tell it where you want to stand and you supply your email address, 2020 will build a 360-degree panoramic view in the background. It might take 20 minutes. It might take 40 minutes. That could take an hour if it's a huge kitchen. You can actually keep working, but it's going to build it in the background. And when it is done, it is going to give you a link. Now, here's what I mean by link. 
If we go back over to my browser for a second, you'll notice my second tab is actually on 2020 on our Panorama Gallery. I'm going to show you how to get to this in just a second. If I click on an example, this is actually an example from uh, Michelle Raymer. Um, Michelle is one of our award winners for uh, 2018's uh, Inspiration Design Award Contest. We just gave her um, her award at KBiz in January. This is her room. This is awesome. This is Michelle's job. Again, this is not mine. This is not 2020. This is a rendering by Michelle. But you'll notice what I can do. I can actually turn. I can look at the floor. I can look at the ceiling. The whole reason I can do that is I published this. I published this to a 360 by clicking on that button right there and simply following the directions. It not only uploads it to a 360, but it actually raises the resolution level of the kitchen, makes it photorealistic, and, and if I go back to my PowerPoint, it sets an environment where your client can actually hold their phone up and see their future space. Now, there's another way to leverage that in your showroom. You have lots of awesome, incredible um, projects that you've worked on in the past. I have a friend just outside of Chicago. What they do is they actually take their old jobs, create 360 panoramas, and then in the showroom, they create QR codes, and they put little signs on the countertops. That's what this is. This is a little sign on a countertop. So you can walk into their showroom. You can walk up to a display. You can take your phone, click on the QR code reader, and when it reads the QR code, it actually takes you right to a 360-degree panoramic view of previous jobs they've worked on. So you can stand in the showroom and look at the Jones job, the Smith job, the, the job on Thoroughbred, or whatever it's going to be. You can connect that. I would highly recommend that you leverage and showcase your previous work. Now, see this little feature right here that's a QR code? You can actually go out online and, there are, and just Google uh, QR code generators. There's a, a generator like, um, like a power generator, G-E-N-E-R-A generator, T-O-R-S. I hope I spelled that right, especially since it's been recorded. You can prove I was wrong if I, if I was. So generator, QR code generator. If you go online and you Google that, you can actually get a list of free QR code generators. You can simply create the link in 2020 by clicking on the camera, like I said. You take that link, you create the QR code, and anybody with a smartphone, which is everybody, can walk into your showroom and scan that and go instantly to that site. Now, we can do the same thing. Like this QR code right now, if you scan it, it will actually take you, it will take you right, to, right to this image that we're looking at right now. Another way to go to that image is simply type this into your browser, panorama.2020.net forward slash pano. This is the last item I'm going to talk about. Matter of fact, I'm almost at the bottom of the hour, so this is perfect. And this is the last item I'm going to talk about, and I will say that this is probably the most popular way to share, to share high-end renderings with your client. In two more minutes, we're going to jump in into the best practices on how to create those renderings, but this is the best way to share those renderings. If you want to see an example of it, write this down right now, panorama.2020.net forward slash pano. And when I am done today, when I'm done, type that into your browser. Don't do it now. Do it afterwards. Type that into your browser, and you'll be able to see what your clients can see um, concerning the kitchens or the bathrooms or the rooms that you've designed for them. Now, these images, when you look at them, so when you go back, if I go back over here to, to my image right here, when you see this image on a phone, you don't need to move around like I am with a mouse. You just turn your body and it moves automatically. But down here at the bottom, right here where I'm circling with my mouse, there will be a pair of goggles, okay? A pair of goggles. If you click on those goggles, it converts this image to virtual reality. It actually creates a left eye, right eye experience. Remember in the beginning I said you're not a marketing expert. You're a kitchen and bath designer. That's where your expertise should be. Okay? Just like me, I'm not a marketing expert. I know kitchens and baths. Well, you don't need to know anything about virtual reality either. You need to be the best kitchen and bath designer, interior designer, salesperson, whatever, whatever your role is in the company. You need to be the best at that. If you click on the camera for 360, we – 2020 will automatically build these images for you. 
So you don't need to know anything about this technology except how to click the button and put your email address in. Once you get this image, you'll come down here right here. You will click on that. It will make a left eye, right eye experience. And if I go back to my PowerPoint, you can take your customer's phone. You can send them that link. They will be able to look at their kitchen as if they're immersed in that kitchen, and they'll be able to take their phone and slide it into a pair of goggles. And then they will be able to wear those goggles and feel like they're in that room. There's plastic goggles. You can get those on average about 20 bucks. They have the cardboard goggles that you can brand um, for your company from companies like Dodo Case. Um, if you buy those in large quantities, you can reduce the price. And then there's always professional goggles like Oculus that you can hook to your computer. Now let me give you an example. I get this question all the time. People say, hey, I'm in my showroom. I want to show people virtual reality, but I'm not sure what kind of goggle to buy. Well, if I go back over to my browser again, I have lots of tabs open. I happen to be in Amazon right now. I went to Amazon before this started, and I typed in VR goggles. There are, it seems like, hundreds of pages of these goggles. So you can buy goggles. They are meant for somebody's phone to slide into. And here is the recommendation that I'm going to give you. The very first one right now, this set of goggles right here is $33, okay? So relatively inexpensive. If you look right here where it says VR headset, I want you to notice it says for iPhone 7, 7 Plus, 6S, 6 Plus, all the way down to 5, Samsung Galaxy, Google, smartphone, Android. Here's what I recommend to you. I recommend that when you buy goggles, and heck, for 33 bucks, you might as well buy four or five sets of them to keep them around your showroom. So people can walk up, scan the QR code, slide the phone in, and see your awesome previous projects that you worked on and their future projects. Make sure when you buy goggles that it is for a standard phone and the plus size phone. There's lots of people that carry the larger phones. For instance, I carry a standard Samsung phone. My wife carries the very large um, uh, iPhone. So you want to make sure that the goggles will fit any of those phones, so pay attention to this right here. That's my best advice to you. Just as important as best practices in presentation is the best practices in rendering. That's why you are all here with us today, because you want to know what are the best practices in creating these awesome renderings that you can use to sell to the client like you saw in the first part of the webinar. Let's jump right into a couple of things here. And let me say first um, what I consider the foundation to great renderings. And I'm going to divide it up into five areas. And we're going to talk about these, and I'm going to demonstrate these live to you. Number one is your hardware. And I know it's important to import textures, import colors, and do all of these really creative things. But at the end of the day, I have to tell you, the most important thing to you as a designer is your computer. And we're going to go over what you need to have to make sure that you have the right computer to get the best renderings possible. Then there's going to be settings on that computer. We're going to talk about working in what I call small screen mode. Then we want to focus a little bit on two really important features in 2020. One is a high resolution output. Um, and the other part that marries directly to that is actually what we call render in the background. So let's spend some time focusing on that. First though, let's get into what's the most important part, and it happens to be the, the boring things, but this is the most important thing to you in creating great renderings. It is your computer, your system. Now, if you go to 2020's website, and if you look at my screen right now, you'll see right here, System Recommendations. Now, a lot of people look and they go right to minimum. Okay, what do I need to have as a minimum? That is completely the wrong way to go about this. You don't want the minimum hardware requirements. You want the recommended hardware requirements. Just like uh, in your job, you're not going to buy the cheapest tool possible to install this kitchen. You're going to buy the best tool, the one that's going to make you the most effective and most efficient at what you do. This is your business. So you want to make sure you're looking at recommended hardware, especially when it comes to buying a new computer. Now, there's a couple of things that are really important here. You want to make sure that you have a processor that's an Intel uh, quad-core i7 or higher. You want to make sure your system memory is at least 8 gig. You also want to make sure that you have a specialty graphics card. In this case, we're recommending an NVIDIA GeForce GTX 750 or above or an ATI Radeon. Now, what we mean by this is basically a gaming 
computer. And when I say gaming, that's G-A-M-I-N-G, gaming computer quality. So when you go to the store, you go to your expert when it comes to uh, hardware, you want to tell them that you want a gaming computer, and they're going to take you right to the right section. Uh, as an example of that, I bought a brand new computer. It will be almost two years ago now. And when I walked into our local store to look at computers, I told them I needed a gaming computer, walked right over, saw the four or five computers that were in the category that I needed to have this great graphics, and we were able to work from there. Now, there's a couple of other things I want to mention. I'm actually going to show you my hardware requirements. But before I do that, I want to mention one other thing here. I want to mention um, something called a, and you'll see right here where my cursor is, a solid state drive. That's your hard drive. And I have to tell you that's the favorite thing that I had on my most recent computer. Um, I, my computer just instantly starts. When I click the on button, it just turns on. There's no warming up. There's no going through system files. It is on, and that's the benefit of a solid state drive. Now, you may be wondering what kind of computer I'm using because my graphics are, number one, awesome. Number two, they're very, very fast. Matter of fact, I'm going to show you in just a moment how you can, I can make my graphics even better because I've had to dumb them down just a little bit to be able to work on webinars like this. But let's go over and take a look at my hardware. You'll see currently I'm using a Dell XTS 15. I do not want you to think that I bought a Dell computer because I think that's the best computer in the world. I did not. I've owned every brand you can imagine. It's just when I went to buy this computer at a particular time, the Dell model had everything that I wanted at a really good price point. So I was really happy with the ratings and the price point. That's why I, why I picked this particular computer. Um, if you'll come down here and take a look, this is a laptop I'm using. I have a quad-core i7. This was happened to be the fastest processor at the time. I have 16 gig of RAM, all right? So that's 16 gig of memory, not 8. I've actually doubled what the, what the minimum is. I have a 1 terabyte solid-state drive. And I'm using the NVIDIA GeForce GTX 960. The recommended was 750 or better. So again, invest a little bit more because this is the tool of your trade. This is where you should be spending your money. The better your computer, the better your results are going to be. Now let's take a look at one other thing. And this is a recommendation that I can make for you on your computer. So just about any type of computer you're currently working on, you may not be set at the right resolution. And by resolution, I mean your general settings for your resolution for your screen. Let's talk a little bit about where you find that first. You'll see I'm set at 920 by 1080, and I'll explain that in a second. So I'm going to come down here to the bottom of my screen. I'm going to say, let's move over to the desktop. Here is a picture of my desktop, and this actually is also a 2020 award-winning design by one of our users, uh, Samantha Barto, I believe, um, with Creative Storage. You see a nice closet there. That's the backdrop on my computer. If you want to go in and check your screen resolution, simply right-click on the screen, click on it, come down to Display Setting, and when you click on Display Setting, you'll see an option here right in the middle called Resolution. If you click on resolution, it will give you a listing or show you the possible resolutions for your computer. What I recommend you do is take it to the maximum. As you'll see on my computer, the maximum is actually 3840 by 2160. That's the recommended. Now you're going to ask, you're going to say, John, why aren't you at the recommended resolution? Well, I typically am. But when I do webinars like this, because I'm pushing so much data out to thousands, if you remember I told you before, we had almost 4,000 kitchen and bath professionals register for, it for this webinar, this resolution actually needs to be reduced. But you want to make sure that you're working at a high resolution, whatever is recommended on your system. So here's what I recommend. I recommend that when we're done, you right-click in the middle of your desktop, you go into your settings, your screen settings, you find resolution, click on the button here, and make sure that you are set at the highest resolution possible. That makes a huge difference in your renderings. And I'm willing to bet that maybe half, maybe three quarters of you, when you go check it, you're actually not set at the highest resolution today. So you might have great graphic capability. You're just not taking advantage of it. So that's number one. 
Number two, let's talk about display settings in 2020. So if we pop back over to our plan, so here's our plan. If I come over here to the File tab, there's a feature under File called Preferences. And when I go into Preferences, this is where you create all of your setup, everything that's going to happen every time you turn your computer on. This is where your defaults are defined. If I go in here and I choose Rendering Performance, I want you to notice something. There's a feature in the middle called Shapes. That feature in the middle called Shapes, you'll see that mine happens to be set on Draft. If I click on the button next to Draft, and I move down here and I click on Best, it will tell 2020 to use the best graphic settings or best resolution possible. So take a look at your system. If you're not happy with your output, go in again into Preferences, go to Rendering Performance, and make sure that you're not set on Draft. Draft would be the lowest setting. Now a couple of other items I want to mention. I have something that I call sc um, small screen. If you look at my, my perspective right now, this is a very large perspective, right? It fills my screen. If I come up here and I click on this button, it will reduce it in size. Now when I reduce it in size, let me bring that back up again, you'll see that I have a smaller screen with a perspective. And as I move around, I can do everything I did with the large screen, but here's the cool part. If you have it set in a smaller screen, it actually renders much, much more quickly. So let's give it a second. You can take a quick look at it. You'll go from draft mode to photo quality within just a few seconds because it's in a small screen. Now look at my countertop here. Look at all of my shadows, my lighting. You'll see the little cross hatching from the uh, cage on the top of, of the light over here. Much, much more detailed and very fast. So I do this because when I'm working, I'm more concerned with speed and accuracy than anything else. If I'm meeting with you and I'm going to present to you, I'm going to be much more interested in the final presentation at that point, not so much the speed and accuracy. So as I work, I tend to leave everything in a small screen, and you can control how large this is just by moving your cursor to the frame. And you can grab hold of it, and you can make it larger or wider in that case, make it more narrower, but you can set it to be whatever size you want. And that way, as you're working, you can have the speed and accuracy, yet still get the beautiful rendering. And then when you're finished, when you're where you need it to be and you're happy with it, you can go ahead and maximize it again and let it do one final drawing at that large screen. Again, this is about speed and accuracy. Now let me show you another feature here real quick. I'm actually going to go here to the very top. There's a little button here. It's actually one feature in from the left. It's called Save as Image. Do you all know what that is? Does everybody use that? Well, you can also come down here to the bottom of the screen to this feature right here to your, to your toolbar down here at the bottom, your ghost bar. And there's also a feature that looks like a little camera with a little orange circle around it that's called Launch High Quality. Well, you may not realize this, but there's a feature built into 11.7 and 11.8. For no other reason, I'm going to tell you, if you haven't updated to 11.7 and 11.8, you need to do it immediately for this reason. If you were to click on high, Launch High Quality, or I would come up here and say click on this one, it says save it as a high resolution. When it creates these high resolution images, it could take five minutes, it could take 10 minutes, Heck, it could take even longer if it's a really, really big plan with a lot of detail. But what will happen is, is it will render it in the background. So you won't have to worry about rendering it um, and waiting and having to you know, wait for your system to stop before you can work. It will render in the background on your computer so you can keep right on working. It doesn't stop you from working. So give, let me give you an example of this. If I click on High Resolution Image, You'll notice it comes down here and it says width and it says height. You can type in the resolution that you want it to be here in width. It'll automatically adjust the height. Now I leave a little button checked right here called preserve aspect ratio. It'll actually preserve the ratios that I've set up so I can use this over and over and over again. So instead of, if you recall, I think that my system right now that you're looking at was set up at 1980 by something. I'm telling it to print something almost twice the resolution. If I click OK, watch what happens. It is going to think for a minute, and it's going to start the process of creating a high-resolution image. And by high-resolution, I mean it will take the image we're looking at right now 
it'll jump it up in scale and make it look like a photo. It's pretty incredible. And it could take five minutes to do this. Now, I could sit here and wait for all 12 steps, but if I'm using 11, 7, 11, 8, I don't need to do that. I can simply click on my floor plan and just start working all over again. I can zoom in and out on my floor plan. I can come over here and grab new cabinets and I can drag them into place. I can create more resolutions. And the whole time I'm working, if I come back down here to the bottom, you'll see that it's still building my, my uh, perspective. And we'll come back to this in just a minute. But I will tell you that when I create perspectives, I tend to go in and I tend to click on that button right there and I click high resolution and that's what I'm going to share with you or to a customer or to anyone else I'm talking to. Now let's come back out of here and let's go over to the next phase while that builds that presentation for us. Let's talk a little bit about content. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to switch over. I'm going to talk a little bit about how important content is. And before I do that, let's go back to our 2020, and I want to click on the Items tab because, again, I can keep working live in 2020. See where it says Countertop Wizard? See where it says Countertops and Trim? And see where it says Lighting Wizard? Well, if you are working within 2020 and you want to have really high-resolution images, I recommend that you only use Countertop Wizard and you only use count, um, Lighting Wizard. And the reason I want you to do that is they have high def catalogs attached to them. So let's say that you're in Countertop Wizard. If you're using Countertop Wizard, people like Silestone and Cambria and Metro Quartz have already created catalogs that have photorealistic images of all of their styles. So if I'm in Cambria and I pick uh, Britannica or I pick uh, Berwyn, you'd actually see those styles in photorealism on your plan. Now, in order for these to work, you must have done this. So let's go back to a basic setup feature. I'm going to go in here, and I'm going to go back to 2020.net. By the way, I haven't been in here for a little while, so it might make me log back in in a second. If I come over here to my catalogs and say 2020 catalogs, if I click on Submit, and let's see if it's going to make me log in. It is. If you have not been actively using 2020.net, you need to do that to get some of the most up-to-date catalogs available. You'll see I have my email address here. There's my password. I simply click on Login, and it will log me in. It will take a second to log me in, but it's going to give me access to lots of cool catalogs that I can download. Now, once it's logged me in, it takes me into the dashboard. I can go into Catalogs and say, let's submit my list of catalogs. It's going to bring up a list of catalogs that I have available, and there's a couple of catalogs that I want you to focus on. One of those catalogs is going to be on, one on countertops, uh, sorry, two on countertops and one on lighting. And if we scroll down here, you'll see that there's all sorts of brand specific catalogs listed. But what we're going to do here is I'm going to click on, click here, and take me into a list of all my available catalogs. Now when this loads, I can scroll down this list. I can scroll down this list. Let's get my little pop-up out of the way. And we can find things like um, Stylestone. I can find, here's Cambry and so forth. I can download those. But they will not work on your system unless you do something to set the feature up. And here's what you need to load to set up those areas. You want to scroll to the bottom. You'll see here near the bottom, there's something called 2020 Generic Catalogs. Under 2020 Generic Catalogs, there's a catalog for Countertop Wizard, and also a second catalog for Countertop Wizard, but one is called Imperial and one is called Metric. You want to download both of those. So download Countertop Wizard and download Countertop Wizard Metric as well. That's really important in what you're doing. Now the third catalog that you want to download is the Lighting Wizard. See where it says down here V11 Sensio Lighting Wizard? You want to download that catalog too. So again, you want to go to 2020.net and download the catalogs, and here's why. When you load those catalogs, those catalogs will activate Countertop Wizard and Lighting, and they will give you quick and easy high-resolution images. Matter of fact, it actually is product-specific as you're working as well. So that's pretty cool. Now the next thing that I want to show you here is, is how you can go up and use features like SketchUp or 2020's Cloud. If I go up here and click on Items, there's a feature right here called Surface. When I go in and I click on Surface, I can actually load things in like tiles and textures and so forth to my room. Many of you are familiar with that, and we're going to touch on that when we get into textures in just a minute. 
To the left of that, though, a lot of you don't realize there's a feature called SketchUp. If I click on SketchUp, this will launch SketchUp, and SketchUp has literally millions and millions of shapes out there. So you can decorate your rooms, add realistic images, but here's a key that I want to share with you. If you're using SketchUp, let's say we type in something like kitchen chair. And by the way, I'm going to come back to my rendering in a minute. I think it's done rendering because I can hear my uh, processor isn't running as fast. I'm going to go in here and click on kitchen chair. You'll see on the kitchen chair as I scroll down, list of kitchen chairs. This is what you want to pay attention to. When you're looking at a chair, for instance, if I click on this modern chair right here, when I click on this, on the right-hand side, it's going to show me something that's named polygons. It says 4,226. If you download an image that has that many polygons, it will look like it is real. It will look like it's a photograph. If, however, you come into this list and you're picking features of kitchen chairs, let's say that I click uh, uh, this kitchen chair here, the kitchen set next to it, you might open this up and it might have um, – actually, this has a lot of polygons because of the way it's based. Um, I, I looked at it being black and white and thought it would not. Sometimes when you click on these, they might have 5, 10, 15, 30, 40. These images are not going to be photorealistic. So when you are downloading images, take a look at the, take a look at the preview and then click on one and make sure it has enough polygons to download. Matter of fact, the image that you're looking at on my screen right here, if we go back into my 2020, when you look at these lights, these are all SketchUp images. So if we come back over here and we look at our high-resolution drawing, it's going to ask me to save this in just a moment. But these lights that you see here at the top, these lights are actually images out of SketchUp. So you can use those to create photorealism as well. Let me go ahead and I'm going to create a, um, a, an image here. So let's call this image webinar February. I just created an image here, and it's going to save my high-resolution image. And I'm going to come back and show you that in just a second. So you'll see my high-res image. Let's come back to that once I finish the, pro the process I'm in now. Now, the other thing in content that I want to mention is 2020 Cloud. Hopefully, you're using 2020 Cloud all the time. I use it constantly. Most of the time, people go into 2020 Cloud, they go into Browse, and they're picking from their, their catalogs. They're going to click on this arrow over here and pick one of their manufacturers, uh, Vanity, Decor, Electrolux, Faber, GE, uh, Gen Air, Kohler, on and on and on. These are real catalogs. And most of you are doing this because you love the fact that you do not have to download the catalogs. They actually download for you automatically, and they're always up to date. And for me, the exciting part for this webinar is the resolution is incredible on these images. If you're using content from this area, it's going to automatically make your renderings look photorealistic. Now, you may already be aware there is a catalog here just called 2020. And if I click on the 2020 catalog, this will give me a list of all sorts of different types of products you can use, um, both architectural and decorative in your rooms. So right now you'll see that I'm looking at stairs. And if I bring up a preview here, you'll see a little preview of the stairs. I can always come through here and scroll up and down and find another item. For instance, I can scroll down and find uh, magazines. And I think if you've ever seen my other webinars, you know I love this open magazine with the spectacles on it, but there's lots of decorations. Now, did you know, did you know that you can always click on the news button on the left and it takes you to a different section? One of my favorite things in the news section happened recently, February 6th. There's something here called tips and tricks. If you click on tips and tricks, watch, give it a second to load, you'll see it's a little article with some help that we can apply to using cloud. You'll see right here it says review. Can you review all decorative items? That's one of the most frequently asked questions. Yes, you can. You can review a whole catalog of the decorative items where it's very easy to preview them. As I scroll down, you'll see some decorative items here. Look how photorealistic they are. You can come up here to categories and say, I'd like to go and show 100 per page. I'd like to change my category to new. When I click new, these are all the brand new shapes, a lot of furniture, even people. You see the 3D 
virtual people that will be in the rooms too. This one reminds me a little bit of myself in that I'd be checking my phone, my smart device, the entire time I'm in that room. So that's what you have here. If you come over here and you go to new, you could pick something else. We could drop down here and say, um, you see we have pets. I could go in and say garage accessories. Maybe you're designing in other rooms of the home. Here are garage accessories. Now these images that you're looking at, they are photorealistic, right? And they automatically enhance your renderings. So again, my recommendation to you is you can use your SketchUp, SketchUp images. Just make sure they're not too, too big because it'll slow the image down. And you can use your 2020 cloud images because they're going to be much more likely to be photorealistic. Less work for you. When they're automatically photorealistic, that means you don't have to spend time adjusting textures and, and whether or not it's glossy or flat and things like that. It's automatically done for you, saving you a lot of time. Now let's move over. Before we go actually to our next slide, let me pop back over here for just a second. Let's talk about that image. Remember just a few minutes ago, I clicked on the Save button and it saved this image? Let me come back and show you something else real quick. That's the image. Let me show you what we saved. I'm actually going to come back into my 2020 files. We're going to come down here. We're going to go to, um, let me modify this by date. So we're going to go down here. We'll scroll all the way to the top. Webinar February, right? We'll double click on that. Look at that image. Look at how awesome that image is. I did that live in front of you. Look at the detail on the countertop. Look at the detail on the floor and the upholstery on the chairs and so forth. How did I do that? Again, let's come back into here. So let's come back into our 2020 file. So we'll go back into 2020. I was looking at a perspective which looked good on my screen, but the way I made it truly photorealistic was I went up here to Save as Image. I picked High Resolution. I set the resolution, and I let it build that image in the background. What did it take? Three, four, five minutes while I was working, but I was still able to work. That is one of what I consider one of the game-changing features in the last 10 years is the render in the background. So awesome. True-to-life textures is one of the most important things to you when it comes to creating these high-resolution images. You'll notice the images on the right-hand side of my screen are awesome. Well, they are awesome because these are professional photographs that the suppliers have, uh, have, have added to their website. And I like to leverage their professional photography in my design. So if I'm wanting to show a Sherwin-Williams paint, I'll actually go to Sherwin-Williams' website. If I want to show a particular tile from Tile Bar, I'll go to Tile Bar's website. If I want to add a particular embossed and grain melamine material to my frameless cabinet, I'll go right to the manufacturer's website. Let's take a look at how we do that. It's pretty simple. So let's go in here. We'll switch back over to our 2020. Here's my 2020. And in order to set this up, I'm going to do something really um, um, uh, more of a screen setup to begin with. I'm going to take my floor plan, and I'm going to drag it all the way to the left. And then on the right-hand side, I'm going to open up my, um, my browser so that you can see um, my options in my browser. You may notice that I am already on the Sherwin-Williams website. But if I were in the Surface tool that we talked about earlier, and I wanted to add tile, well, I would simply go into a tile website, and you'll see the tiles are here. And the key to all of these things is, is where you save them. If I wanted to save the wildfire, uh, wildflower tile, I would right-click on it. There's an option here, and you could simply say, Save Picture As, and put it in a particular folder. Now, I create my own folder. So if we come down to the bottom of the screen here, you'll notice that under 2020, if we scroll down here in 2020, You'll see that I have lots of folders created, but one's called My Textures. And I can go in here and say, I want to do or use wall tiles. And this will give me a list of all the tiles that I've already downloaded. Or I could go back to My Textures and say, I want to look at door samples or door textures. Here are door textures that I have already downloaded. So if we go back into our 2020, so let's go back, open our 2020 back up again. Let's go ahead and open up our tile bar screen. I would save these images to use in 2020. Now let's take an example of maybe painting something instead. So if I come over to my catalog, I'm going to go over here, grab a base 15, and I'm going to drop it right in the middle of the floor, and I'm going to zoom in. If I want to paint this cabinet yellow, I can. Matter of fact, I can make it truly pineapple cream by Sherwin-Williams. I could take 
any color from a website and apply it to this cabinet. I'm going to do that, but before I do that, I want to point out that if you want to apply this color to everything in the room, simply right-click on the floor plan, go down to the feature here called Global Attributes, and that allows you to globally apply it. For now, though, I'm just going to double-click on the cabinet. The cabinet will open up, and you'll see your cabinet right there. There's my cabinet. We're going to jump over here to Variables, and we will go into the texture area, which I'm sure you've used over and over again. I'm going to choose Door Texture, and when you go into Door Texture, you'll see your generic textures on the left. You'll see textures that you've already used on the design in the middle, and then the User Texture Library allows you to add new textures. So let's make an example or use one as an example. I said I like pineapple cream, right? There's a feature right here called an eyedropper. If I take the eyedropper, hold my left button down, and drag it to pineapple green and let it go, that color is now captured. I can actually name it pineapple, um, I think I said green, pineapple cream. I can capture pineapple cream, and I can use it not just on this cabinet, but I can use it on cabinets you know, for the next design, design after that, because I've captured that color. So I have, if you think about this, Sherwin-Williams has spent a lot of money, right? And uh, if you're using uh, Benjamin Moore or Farrow and Ball, they spend a lot of marketing money to make true-to-life images or colors. Your tile bar did the same thing with textures for tile. You can take their investment, leverage that, and apply that to your images to create the photorealism. Now, I drag the eyedropper over and touch that. It captured the color. When I click OK, my cabinet is now pineapple cream. Let's take this one step further, though. This is a frameless cabinet you're looking at. Let's say you're going to use a textured melamine, and you don't see that in your manufacturer's catalog. If you come over here, and I'm going to click on my next tab, where I have gone in and I have browsed on my online textured melamine door samples. And you'll see lots of different textured melamines. Now, typically, I would go into a cabinet manufacturer's website to do this. Um, I did not do this this time because I try not to show any specific cabinet manufacturers. But I can go in here and pick a door. Let's say we pick this door right here. There's my door. If I want to apply this to that, let me give you a word of advice, or let me show you a feature I like to use. Down here at the bottom of the screen, I can search, and I'm going to type in SNP which will take me to one of my favorite window, window apps. When SNP appears, it'll say, new, do you want to SNP something? SNP is going to allow me to cut an image and apply it to another. I'm going to say, yes, go ahead and do that. I'm going to then take my cursor, and I'm going to cut the center section out of this door. I have snipped that texture. I will save this, and I'm going to call this uh, February webinar. I will click OK. All right, so I just attached it. Now, watch. If I come in here, and let's make this full screen now. I come in here and say I want to apply it here. I'm going to do the same thing I did before. I'm going to go to Door Texture. I'm going to double click on it. Just like we did before with the, um, the uh, uh, yellow color, I'm going to click on User Texture. But instead, Instead of clicking on the eyedropper, I'm going to click on the Browse button. By the way, this is exactly how I would have brought tile in and applied tile to the wall. And one of the things you may want to search for when you're searching for tile and images like that is you might want to use the word seamless. seamless. Um, that will make it easier to apply and repeat the pattern. See right here, I saved an image called Webinar Image. Remember, you just saw me type that in. If I click Open, it will apply that textured melamine right here. If I click OK again, watch. It has applied it to my cabinet as well. I can zoom in. I can zoom out. You can see that I've applied that texture there. Now, I can also scale that image if I wanted to. So if we come back in here again, because I don't quite like the way that image looks. So let's come back one more time. Let me show you what I would have done. We would come back in, and I'm going to bring it in again. This time when I go in, I'm going to scale it. I'll come in here, and I'll click on the button. I'll say Webinar Image. Let's bring it in again. There's my image. See where it says Scale? I'm going to tell it that I want it to be 24 inches in width. It will automatically scale its height. Now when I click OK, if we come back and take this cabinet, look at this cabinet again, let's zoom in, you'll see how much more realistic that texture is. 
I took that texture from a manufactured website and applied it to that cabinet. Now I have a photorealistic applied embossed in grain texture. Pretty cool. We'll go ahead and we'll click OK, and it will save it for that cabinet. Again, if I wanted to add it everywhere, I could have simply right-clicked on my floor plan here, could have right-clicked on my floor plan, and gone into what's called global attributes. Now, let's go to our very last feature that I want to mention when it comes to best practices in rendering, and that's going to be lighting. Textures is key. Lighting to me is one of the most important things of anything that we've talked about today. I've actually recorded a little video here because I knew that I would be time crunched at the end, and I didn't want to talk about too many extra things, so I kind of uh, focused on exactly what I wanted to show you with lighting. So I'm going to click on a little video, and I'm going to let this play. And I want you to notice that as we go through, I'm going to talk a little bit about some of the lighting steps. Number one is it's rendering. I want you to notice the shadow lines here. I want you to see that we do have lights coming in from the lighting fixtures above, right? You'll see the shadows, and to me, shadows and light is so, so important because they add depth. Now, the first thing that I do, I always add, or I try to add sunlight. Now, watch as I move the image around on the screen how it's applying sunlight and actually shadowing based on the window frame, any accessories, accoutrements that are in the room. It's actually shadowing based on those. Now, you're going to ask, why do I like to use sunlight? I like to use sunlight because when sunlight touches a photorealistic texture, like our uh, um, Carrera countertop here, it will make the image pop. It will make those, all the graining and everything pop in that image. If we go through and do a high resolution image like we talked about um, a little bit earlier, it really, really makes it photorealistic. Now, I also like to drag my own lights over. And if you look, I went to the room furniture catalog lighting. I'm placing a recessed light, and I'm going to place it right above the island. Now, one of my tricks to this is, is I like to take a recessed light, and I will lower the light to just above an object, let's say 54 inches in this case. And then I will go through to its attributes, and I will make the light invisible. I can make the light invisible by going to variables. I'll scroll down and click on properties. And where it says make 3D, I'll say no. Now, the light is gone. The light has disappeared. But I will have a 54-inch invisible light source just above this book. So I can create a lighting effect but not see the light itself. I can also go into the light's property by right-clicking on it and going to properties. I can change the color. I can change how bright it is. But more importantly, I can change the profile of the light. I can go in and pick any type of light diffusion pattern. Right now, you're looking at a defined light. I can go down and pick, let's say, a tight focus light. Or maybe I go back and pick something like Bollard. I really like the diffusion patterns of some of the images like Bollard. It almost creates like a ringed pattern around the light. Now, if we come back around the surface, I should say, if we come back and let it render, you're going to look and say, okay, the book. I'm actually focusing on the book. And actually, let me stop for just a second. Okay, I'm going to stop the video. I focus the light on the book because here's one of my tricks. I like to pick something for you to focus on. I'll pick something that's high res, maybe right in front of you, and I will take that image and I will put perfect lighting and everything on it because that is what's going to pop out at you. And then as you look across the kitchen, it's the rest of it is going to be background. But it makes the whole image look better because I focused on one area. You do not always have the time to go around the room and make everything perfect. So I try to make what's right in front of you perfect, and the rest of it blends in as well. So let me go ahead and let this continue on. One of, the other, one of the best ways actually to show lights is to dim the lights that are in the background. So you can go back in the lighting, go over to scene, and where it says ambient light, I can scroll that all the way to the left, which will turn down all the lights in the room. Or I did it just maybe to a quarter point, and you'll notice that it's now shadowed where the light is. Watch when I let it re-render. Take a look at that. Look at the extra light that I applied. If you think about it, that light is actually floating right here, but you can't see it, can you? But you can see the result of the light because I picked something that was photorealistic. I applied a little light so it pops out at you, and then the rest of the image in the back, that becomes background imagery. 
So I like to take whatever's right in front of you and make that really pop, or I'll take a specialty item, spend extra time on lighting. But lighting will really help define the quality of your overall rendering. Awesome. So hopefully, you've spent a little bit more than an hour with me. Hopefully, you have found a number of great tips, uh, a lot of knowledge in what we've talked about today that will not only help you create better renderings, lots and lots of ways to create better renderings, but as just as important, help you sell, help you sell these renderings in these new spaces to your clients. Now, I know that these webinars are really popular. A lot of times we'll get as many as three, four, five thousand 5,000 people register for them. You might even get over 10,000 plays over the next couple of weeks. But did you know that we regularly supply knowledge to, to everybody who's a 2020 user? And we've started to use social media as well. So if you are not following us in social media, please join us in whatever your favorite social media platform is. Now I want you to notice that we have specialty learning opportunities all through the week. You know, um, hashtag Tip Tuesday, hashtag Knowledge Wednesday, hashtag Sunday Reading, where we're constantly supplying you information, not just about being a better 2020 user, but also industry-specific information about trends and other things that will help you provide the best, the best results to your clients. So thanks for joining us, and I'm going to wish everyone an awesome rest of your day. Thank you.